What's going on YouTube? Um, I've never really tried to hide where I've came from and I've never really tried to come on and act like I had some sort of insight in regards to what's going on in um, different inner city and or lower income environments um, where you have black people. Uh, I know that there are some similarities in terms of racism, um, but even then, it's a different type. Uh, and I've kind of talked about that, and other men have talked about that before, in, in regards to indirect and direct racism. Um, and I've said, I haven't lived it firsthand, but once again, it's not as if we are removed uh, by a whole bunch of generations. I still have buddies that are the first ones in their family to go to school and they will be the first ones to make it to the middle class or upper class. Um, you know, my parents didn't start off. They started off poor. Started off poor in Nigeria, uh, came to America struggling. Um, and, you know, we didn't make it out until I was, what, six or seven. But I was still too young to understand what was really going on. Uh, <clears throat> so with that being said, I can't tell you I know what it's like. Uh, the only reason why I have somewhat of an insight is because of the nature of my job. As you guys know, I'm in public ed, uh, and I work in a district that is <laughs> not a district similar to the one that I went to school in, in terms of middle school, high school, elementary school. Uh, this is a lower income environment. Uh, where you have a lot of single parent households um, and you have a lot of kids who aren't getting the proper support in terms of financial, spiritual, emotional, uh, logical, did I say spiritual, health wise, you know, they're just not getting adequate support. Uh, you have fathers in and out of jail, brothers getting shot and killed, drug dealing, you know, moms, prostitution, living from uh, living with one man, uh, then in another month living with another man, and, you know, kids staying with grandparents, kids living in foster care. Uh, so being in that opened up my eyes to how hard it was. Now, I've never tried to pass myself off as somebody who's come from that environment just to say that I was cool or just to come up with an excuse for why I didn't do something correctly. Um... And I'm glad I didn't, because being in that environment, or still being in that environment, um, you truly know what's going on, and you truly feel the hardships that take place. Um, you can read books, you can watch specials, or uh, listen to somebody speak, but unless you see it firsthand on a day-to-day -day basis, you got four or five-year-olds don't know who's going to pick them up, and it's raining. And literally, you want to take those kids home, but you know you can't. Literally, you do. It's that bad, and nothing can really give you that unless you grew up in it or you were exposed to it for an extended amount of time. So, like I said, I dare not try to come on and pass myself off as somebody who's come from that uh, environment. Not because I feel that I'm better, but it would be the ultimate form of disrespect to their sort of world and their environment. Um, really. And with that being said, I get upset with black women because a lot of the ones who talk about how professional they are and what they have going on, you guys grew up how I grew up guys grew up middle class or upper class you don't really know a lot of the struggles that are going on if anything you read about it um, you may have seen it in the movie but you don't know firsthand okay um, so I get upset when you guys steal their identities and try to act as if you come from that environment and you're having the same sort of problems uh, that these women are having 
Um, you don't know what it's like to have a mother who has a boyfriend who is trying to rape you and the mom is blaming you, right? And she's trying to kick you out. This is, this is not something that you see on a TV show. Like, this is, like, real. This is stuff that I've dealt with personally. No joke. On more than one occasion, high school, middle school, at fucking elementary school, I didn't even know how to deal with it the first time it happened. Uh, that's how real it is. So it, it upsets me for you guys to come on and act like you come from that environment just so you can use their shortcomings as an excuse for your poor choices, right? Um, you made a bad choice, accept it and move on. You know better, you should have done better, but instead of just accepting that you made a error, a flaw, a mistake, you'll come on and act as if you come from this group and act like you come from somebody who never knew their father or who never knew what it was like to come home to a home that didn't have any drama um, you know we didn't know how we were gonna pay bills sometimes we didn't eat um, you know mom's boyfriend is trying to touch me you know you never were exposed to any of that um, so to come on and try to steal their identity it's fucked up because it's not even on that we all support each other. No. It's literally, uh, I'm going to use you for a second. I'm not really interested. I don't really care. I just need to use you because it adds to my uh, level of greatness. Even though we know how you grew up. Even though we know, you know, you got your monthly allowance when it was time to go back to school shopping. Daddy gave you his Macy's credit card. Um, and I say that because that's how I grew up as well. So none of y'all can come on and tell me otherwise. Uh, I always enjoy talking to black women who are professional, who actually have came from that environment. Because to me, you get the best level of conversation, uh, and they're real about it. And I love that. I, I was fortunate enough to know a couple of black women who made it to college who actually came from that environment and the funny thing is you never got that whole um, we're superior to black men and we're just doing so well they knew it they knew that everybody was struggling yeah in terms of graduation there was more black women going to college than black men but it was still only a, a handful and the vast majority of people were struggling right so there's almost a level of sadness because they know there's so many black women just down and out who will never get there uh, so there's a level of humbleness there's a level of uh, commonality because they see the struggle on both sides of the spectrum but you'll have the middle and upper class black women who will come on um, and probably the worst thing that they can do is steal their identity and act like every last single black woman is on point and doing well that whole spirit of perfection and for me it's just like man have you guys even seen it have you even spent like a week in that environment like how could you some of you guys say some of the things that you guys have said if you actually truly came there you can't like even some of my homegirls They'll be the first one to say, I mean, it was bad, but honestly, you know, my pops was there or my uncle kind of held us down. Like, they're so quick to talk about some of the advantages that they had because they didn't want to uh, act like they had it harder than somebody else or act like they had it just as hard. But some of you guys come on and I'm like so convinced that you've never seen it at all. You've never really been around it. Um because you would see that it's a lot of people failing on both sides of the equation. I mean, I even see it myself. Yeah, when it comes time to graduate and you're looking at who's going where, um, of course, there's more women than men. Um, and even uh, the boys who are going to college, a lot of it is because they got a football scholarship. 
um, or basketball, not not so much basketball, more so football. Uh, but then you're seeing so many people down and out. So many girls got pregnant, sophomore, dropped out. They're sad. They're depressed. Right? They're not running around acting as if it's cool to be a single mother when they're pregnant, when they're looking at some of their schoolmates having fun and people are looking at them weird. It's not it's not fun to be that girl. So you're like you're seeing their emotions, like you're seeing their tears, you're seeing them upset. And I got I, I take all that is into consideration and I'm just sitting back and I'm like, man, look at them. Like, y'all hadn't even seen it because none of you guys would be coming on and acting as if there's just so many successful black women. That there's so many to the point where we don't even have to address the bullshit. I mean, how many of you guys are actually going back and trying to help these women out? You know, people talk about, well, well black men need to do better to tell other black men what to do. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? You're right. Even though a lot of us have already tried. But you're still right. But did you not notice the, ha the the vast majority of women struggling? I don't even want to say handful. But did you not notice that there was a great amount of black women who had no level of direction? They didn't know where they were going. They were making horrible mistakes. Did you not see that? You're supposed to know what they're coming, where they're coming from. You've stolen, you've stolen their identity. Right? You've taken their struggles and convinced America that they're, their, that, uh, you know, they're your own. You know, so the least you can do is give back or see what's going on. And a lot of you guys haven't even done it. So I'm not even mad. I'm, I'm not even mad because, like I said, I would never have known if I didn't make my certain career choice. But if I would have chose a different career, I would have never been exposed to what's going on. Never. So for me... All I'm trying to say is, just be mindful of what you say and how you come off. You know, it's not cool to come on and pass off the spirit of perfection in terms of black women. Um, because it's clearly showing that you haven't really been there. Because if you were there and you seen what was going on, it's damn near impossible to have that mindset. It's damn near impossible. When you see true poverty, you see people who are truly struggling, it's damn near impossible. And like I said before, I know black women that have made it. They were fortunate enough to make it out of that situation. And they will be the first one to tell you all the advantages that they had. That's the crazy thing. They will tell you, oh, yeah, you know, it was bad. But, I mean, my mom wasn't doing drugs. You know, my, my mom had a job. So we weren't moving from apartment to apartment or boyfriend to boyfriend. And they're not using the excuses. But you, Miss Middle Class, Miss Upper Class, you're coming on and acting as if that's where you come from. So, you know, that's my video. Uh, you know, it's not a joke to me. You know, like I said before, a lot of people coming on Gen X, YouTube, people want to have fun, say what they want to say. But, I mean, if you haven't seen it, um, you should really take the time to understand it. Because it's not really a joke. Um, you know, it's really not. You have people who are coming from hard situations. So even when I come on and I talk about accountability and what black men or black women or the black community needs to do, I still have that in the back of my mind so that I make sure that I'm not trying to offend or disrespect anybody. Uh, so that's my video. Now take it easy. God bless.